Welcome to Trapping TV. We're down in Texas. We're still trapping down here. We got a nice bobcat in a foothold on a flag set with a portable pocket. Everything's right in the world because this is what we come down here for and this is just cooler and snot. I don't care who you are. When you start catching bobcats on purpose, it means a lot because these things are some pretty cool animals. Doing our predator control group. This is Albert. He's going to be uh, heading out with the cameraman today, show you some sets that he makes. He's going to be setting some DPs out here on some deer feeders. Uh, him and Will are going to be covering kind of the the smaller field out here, which is going to be about uh, five, 6,000 acres. And uh, that's going to be their job this morning. So, Albert, take good care of him, show him a lot of things. Okay, man. And uh, make sure you catch a lot. That's always my goal is to beat the big man. That's it. As long as you can beat Flint, we're doing good. Amen. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Let's get with it. This is a, a Sleepy Creek number four double long spring. I put the big pan on it. I'm going to use these setters to push these springs down and take this cat's foot out of the trap so I can reset it. Now, I bed my traps a lot different from people. I power bed them. I've been doing this for a long time. And I love it. I sleep better when they're power bent. These are spike nails. I use eight, tens, and twelves. This will work on any trap. I haven't found one yet. I can't power bed Douglas traps. I've done some of them. It works good. Coyote trapping, fox trapping, I power bed. These are coffee filters. I use them for pan covers. I'll set down a little bit. I'm going to walk right through this trench. I just block from my trap in, my sleepy creek for These in, I don't care about that out there. I want him to come up there. From there in, it's blocked. He's got to come up the trench. A little ball kick yarn. It's got a little big cat gland in it. It's mixed in water, soluble crystals. Stays there longer. A little cat collector down there. And I want to use a trailing scent from my trap, a little bit over my trap, and back that way toward my flag. Yep. This is my own flagging system. It's got a half inch rod there. It's about two feet long. I drive about nine inches in the ground. This is three quarter, or a half inch uh, PVC pipe. I put this on there. I got a quarter key right there, so it only goes so far. This is quarter inch. I got a uh, fishing swivel on there, and then I just use fishing wire or a string on that. Just no turkey wing I brought with me. And I just set it down in there. No matter which way the wind blows, this thing will turn. If the wind, the wind changes, the flag changes. 
Now I set out there where you can see a long ways this way. If a cat comes out that ain't see. If a cat comes out up there, you can see. I got three long strips covered. This little pond's got a little draw coming into it to the back side. They come down it to the water hole. They're going to sit. They come to the flag. They're going to hit my trailing scent right to the trap. Just like that one did. Simple, huh? Dispatch this cow by the lungs. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll show you why it's dirty. We'll show you inside the teeth. If you miss, you know we're making fun of you. That's okay. What power is that on? Three. Oh, cow. Put, put that back on there. <laughs> I want to show y'all something. The whole that I got with this number three when I said Holly modified that's what I mean I do not like Sam I am what Sleepy Creek did on the offsets they do these pressed out things for the offset and it doesn't work very well so what I do is I take a, a flat piece of metal and I just weld it in there it gives me a huge surface I've got an extra bed and piece on here and I've got the big pans this is what I want to show you if you understand leverage with your long chains, this being smooth, that's what held that coyote all day. So when I run this down being smooth, he can't jack this, there's no way. Every time he pulls up, it slides. When he releases, it goes down. If you try to do this with rebar, guys, you're gonna have pulled stakes everywhere because those little ridges are gonna hold this and he's gonna be out of here in like three minutes. So These guys already talked about using PVC instead of steel because it's lighter. It's, that's not gonna hold up. Yeah, I mean, what, what do you think would happen if we had PVC on the top of this for this coyote? He's gonna chew the PVC, yes. he's gonna pull the stake off the top and he's gonna go away. He's gone, he lost the trap didn't work so you're gonna have a something that's disposable one of the things we really like about like I said that's my lure I'm gonna reset this tomorrow I don't have to relure this after this coyote I'm gonna go somewhere we have daylight and I'm gonna get right outside this circle and I'm gonna push this back in the ground I'm gonna reset it and wait for the next victim to come along it's a really neat system when you see how and, he, and if you're using dirt holes and you're having theft problems that goes away when you use this because you'll never know a traps there So I'll just leave this here. Normal. That is one dirty gun. So this coyote is in a predicament. Yeah, how you doing, buddy? We got him in a CDR. There's the pipe. Like I said, we'll remake these tomorrow. This is a, a cash set. Some people call it a cash say set, but it's a cash set. And it's 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 kind of one of those that'll work somewhat on cats and it'll definitely work on coyotes. And it's also staked to that right there. And he just can't get away. Now let's talk about miss again. Now this is for Daryl. The the he, I know he won't see this online because he doesn't have a computer. So if you know Daryl. Tell him I named this set after him. He's the one that won the coyote competition last year. And we had some pretty healthy debates that you can't put coyotes inside a cover. Now I want you to see, this is where the pipe was at. Still is. And that's our bed. We got trees. I had to trim these out to get in here. This is a coyote trail where the tracks were coming. They're not out on the road. They're going from draw to draw and they're coming down through here. You, this is putting a coyote in cover. I mean, he can't go off the backside unless he jumps. I've got him blocked into right here and I've run him under this tree and this coyote's chewed a lot of this out. But this was a lot thicker. Coming down the trail, had no problem. Going under the bush, gets caught. 
Ain't that right, big man? You got a 16 to 18 inch trap bed away from that pipe. Absolutely. There's my cow trapping, man. I'm not fox trapping. <laughs> and you're about 20 yards off the road or better. Look at the tracks. Well, that brings up a good point. Th this ranch we're on, they've been running helicopters and shooting things like crazy. The, the hunters, because of whatever they're seeing on TV now, they all want to come out here and shoot bobcats and coyotes, and I get it, but they've killed, the assistant manager thinks, over 100, so I don't know what that means, but it's over 100. And then every ranch in here has got a gun, and when they see them, they shoot them, so the numbers are way down. And the, the more classical coyote sets that would be out on the road, like Norm was saying, because we're, we're off the road a good bit. Yeah. These coyotes, I swear, he must have took it off when we got here. I believe they got flak vests, Cavalar helmets, and trauma plates. They are staying in these low places you think of cats, and they're when they do cross the road, they're doing it at a run, because I've seen a few of them. They're not trotting, they're sprinting, and they're doing it real low to the ground. These coyotes know open ground is very dangerous on this ranch. So they've trained these coyotes to get down in these tight places, which when we make the set, you'll see how rough this is. This is not a, a classic coyote location at all. So they're running down through that thick stuff, and I mean really thick stuff. They're crossing the road, and they're going back down into more of it, which goes out through here. And it's, it's just like great big when you think of out west coolies. There's not a lot of these on here, but every one that I found, the coyotes are going through some tremendously stick stuff not to get out in the open. So if you're gonna trap coyotes and you wanna set a certain location, it doesn't make a hill of beans to the coyotes if you go set there if they're not there. So you, you've got to learn to find the coyotes to find where to put your sets. Because the only one that matters in this game as far as getting caught is that animal right there. And they, they showed us pretty quick they're not out there on those, those corners and stuff like they normally are because of the pressure that's getting put on them. Hi guys, I'm Mike Spawn from Golden Hawk Canoes. Uh, we manufacture custom stable canoes out of Merrill, Wisconsin. The Golden Hawk Canoes started back in 1968. Uh, the canoe is an Adirondack style canoe that's designed for trapping. It's designed for stability, um, to be able to work out of the canoe. It's, it's a tool, not a toy. And uh, we custom make each one. Uh, they're handcrafted and you uh, have the options of motorized, uh, up to four horses in our, our largest. Um, they're an elevated transom canoe, so whether you're going forward or reverse, uh, the, the belly of the canoe that's in the water is a canoe. We have a lot of different options, uh, different seat options, uh, motor options, uh, color options, and we really try to tailor and design these canoes for what each customer wants. Uh, they start on at about 45 pounds for a 10 footer and go up to 65 pounds in our 12 square. They're designed for stability. They're all 38 inches wide and that's where we get our stability from. So where it will make these shorter canoes, you can get a lot shallower waters, maneuver a lot better in them. Uh, they also have a full aluminum keel from tip to tip. Now, what's great about having the keel is when you get in some wind or you get in some rough waters, it helps track you a lot better. When you're in the shallow waters, that aluminum is what's beating on the rocks, what's dragging over the logs. We also have uh, flotation foam in both ends that if you were to have any any problems uh, you're not going to lose your your boat well here's that portable pocket dirt hole set. Trap's gone. Drag's going off that way. Oh, it comes over here. Oh, it's dropping. Look at this. Bobcat. Is it? Yeah. Oh, no. Bobcat! In a portable pocket. Yeah.
So we've been showcasing this new product and we wanted to see how it worked on Predators. And this is our second night with that set, I think. And it produced a nice, uh, pretty little bobcat right there. Uh, this one might be a little dangerous, but yeah, we'll try. We'll see if they're up. Okay, we're out here on Jennifer's part of the snare line. She's got her a nice cat right here. She beat me to it or I had to stole it from her. So, since she called, there's your cat. Go take care of it. You gonna be quiet and camera shy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's a little muddy, but I'm sure once we wash him up, you can see he's pretty white. He'll be why a is he muddy? Because it rained for the last two days. That's why he's all muddy. So, the new cat woman. Good job. Proud of you. What a great sight. Uh, we pulled up here and we've really been trying to get more footage for y'all and setting doubles to get a real nice double on coyotes and we pull up, see two animals and we have a double on cats. This is where doubles pay. Uh, it's just, it pays all the way around. If these cats go good, our payday is doubled instead of one. I'm double happy right now. Uh, we had a flat set and a dirt hole, and here's proofs in the pudding, folks. It don't get better than this. Mr. Wheel. Well, pull up to this set. We just Clint cut the uh, raccoon right there. It's coming down. Should have been filming just to pull up to the next set and got up here and brush was moving. He cut himself a big tom. Uh, on the last trip to Alabama, or the first trip to Alabama, we had a he had caught a nice cat by the hind foot. Well, they have that much more room to reach you off the burn circle, guys. If you're a camera guy, you have to pay attention. Unlike me, I don't like to pay attention too much. This cat literally just swiped underneath my arm. You, you were congested till about 30 seconds ago. Yeah, I can breathe very good right now. Do you need some toilet paper? No, I don't need that. So if you're going to be filming your buddy and you're wanting all this cool footage, you got to be careful is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs>